What's up guys, Terus Cousin here. Welcome back to the last and the best React keys and list tutorial you're ever gonna have to watch. I promise you, if you watch this video and you watch it until the end, you're not gonna have to watch another video on keys ever again because you will completely understand what they are and how they are used. Cool, let's begin. I have here, as usual, a very, very simple application. We have here a list of users from zero to nine. And what I want to do first is I want to show you what happens if you don't put your keys properly and then talk about keys and why you should actually even do them. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this console here and I'm going to go and find the HTML elements that represents our users here. And here they are. They are a bunch of buttons because I have an on-click event listener to them. When I click them, this user is going to get deleted. I want you to focus your attention here at the bottom and see what happens to these elements whenever I delete a user. What Chrome is going to do is whenever there's a change to any element, it's going to highlight that element, indicating to us that something has changed. So watch what happens when I delete user zero. I delete and every single element has highlighted. I delete user one and every single element has highlighted again. If I now go and look at the code for this, you're gonna see that it's really simple. We have here our state with our users. It's getting initialized by this default users here. If I open that, it's just a list of static users with an ID and a name property, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Then we have this handle remove function, which handles our deletion of a user. And then we have the code here that renders each individual user one by one. Obviously, you're gonna see that we have an error here. It's saying that we're missing a key prop for the element in an iterator, and actually, if we go back to our code and go to our console, we're gonna see a similar error in our console. Warning, each child in a list should have a unique key prop. So now let's see what happens if I add a proper key to this button. So I'll do key and then I'll do user.id. Go back to our application, refresh, go back to our elements again and open up the buttons. And now pay attention to what is highlighted when I delete every user. So I delete user zero, nothing is highlighted, only, only this first div here, right? I delete user one, nothing again is highlighted, only this div because something is changing in a div, right? A user is getting removed. So what's really going on here? Why is it that whenever we're providing a key, nothing is being highlighted, but when we don't provide a key, everything is highlighted? Well, for this, you have to understand how keys work in React and what they actually are. So from React's perspective, keys are identifiers. They are a way to uniquely identify every single element in your code to then be able to make efficient updates whenever React has to. So whenever we make a change, such as deleting a user, having a unique key will allow React to identify each element and make that change as efficiently as possible. Now, in our case, what does it mean to be efficient, right? Well, we have to think about what is the work required for React to do to efficiently delete a user. So if we're deleting a user, we just deleted user zero, really the only thing that React would have to do is delete this user zero from this list and then leave everything else untouched because user one, two, three, and so on, they haven't changed. They're the same. They have no new props. They have no new text, no new state. They are exactly the same. So React doesn't need to do anything to them. Now, when we have a key, we delete this and you see that nothing is being done to those elements, which is great. It's exactly what we want. But then if I come to the code and I delete the key, that is no longer happening. I'll refresh, I'll open up the elements again. I delete user zero and everything is being updated. Well, that's because React, when you don't provide a key, it's actually not going to not provide a key. It's going to apply one behind the scenes without you knowing. It's going to apply the index of the element as a key, which means that that is exactly equivalent to if I were to do something like user and then index here and then manually provide key index, this would be the same in React's perspective as not providing a key. And we can prove this by going back to our application, reloading again, opening up our elements again, and then deleting a user. And you're gonna see that even with a key of index, everything is being highlighted as I delete. I delete and everything is highlighted. So why is that? What's really going on? Well, we said that React uses these keys to uniquely identify every single item when making an update. And we also said that the most efficient update for this when deleting a user is to just remove that user and leave everything else untouched. But if we have the index, as a key, which we have now in our code, when we delete the user, actually before we delete a user, user zero has the key of zero because that is index zero, it is the first element in the array. User one has a key of one, user two has a key of two, and so on. 
But now, when I click delete user zero, React is gonna make that deletion. And when it comes time to make those updates, what you're gonna see is that user one is now in the first position of the array, which if it has the index as a key, that means that it's now receiving the key of zero, which is a different key than it had on the previous render. User two has now a key of one because it's the first element, well, the second element in the array. User three has a key of two and so on. From React's perspective, every single one of these users now has a different key, which means that React is going to consider that a whole new element. So that's what you're seeing here. I delete user one, every user is offset by one, every user has a different key. React sees those as a different element, and so it will recreate and remount the entire element, which is why everything is highlighting as I delete a user. But now, if I come back to my code, and instead of index, I remove this and I put user dot ID like we had before, and then I refresh and do the same things again. The reason why nothing is highlighting is because even though we've deleted user zero, user one still has the same ID that it has before, user two has the same ID, every single user has the same ID because that ID is not dependent on the order that they are in the array. So that's what keys are, and that's why they are always required and really important whenever you're mapping over things in your code. And that is why if you don't provide a key, React is going to be very obvious about it, and it's going to scream at you that, hey, provide a key, because otherwise you're throwing every single performance optimization that I try to do out the window. And even though that you can do the index here, right, and you can do this and then index, right, React is no longer going to complain, it's no longer going to throw an error, even though this is equivalent to not not having a key, which might be confusing, why is React allowing this? It's because React doesn't really care what key you're actually giving it. It actually has no way to really know if it's a good key or not. All that it cares about is that you explicitly provide a key. As long as you provide any key, it could really be a string of like one or something, or even just one. React is gonna be happy because from its perspective, you've provided a key and the responsibility to find a good key is solely on you. So now the question is, what makes a good key? We've seen that if you provide the index, that's not good, so then what should you do? Well, you should really think about finding something that is unique across your array, something that no two elements are gonna have that is going to be the same. For example, here in our default users, right? if I go to this definition, we have an ID property, and although in this case it is the index, this user's array is never going to change, so this ID here, this index, is always going to be the same. We have it here in the state, and it's actually the state that is going to change. So this users here is going to change. So that's why we can't use the index of this array. But this users here is static, it'll never change. And so this ID is always going to be the same. We could have also used the name property here in our case, because here we can guarantee that no two users are gonna have the same name, but this will differ in your case. So be sure to pick a property that is unique, but we could have just as easily come here and instead of ID, we could have done name and this would have been exactly the same. The point is for you to pick something that you can guarantee will be unique in that array. If you're dealing with entities that come from a database, usually they will have an ID that is already unique. So it's as easy as using that ID. If you're dealing with something that doesn't really have something, you have to get creative and make sure that you give some sort of unique identifier as your key. Now, if you don't do this, if you don't provide a unique key, you're gonna have some very strange bugs because again, React uses those keys to identify unique items. And if two items have the same key, in React's perspective, they are the same item. So if you delete a user that has the same key, it's going to delete both users because they both have the same key, right? So this is really important. So make sure that you spend all of the time that you need to really understand this, take this code, play around with it on your own, really understand and try to put different values for the keys and see what kind of results you get. This is a really, really important concept in React. And it's actually one of the fundamental concepts of React and how it's used. Cool, so there you go. That was a tutorial on React keys and lists. If you've enjoyed this video, if you got any value from it whatsoever, please do consider giving it a big thumbs up, making sure to subscribe because honestly, it really does help me out a lot and it shows me that you enjoy my content and that you want to see more future videos. If for some reason you still haven't joined the Discord, honestly, what are you doing? You're missing out on the biggest value if you're trying to learn React ever available. I post about things like this and way more every single day. And honestly, if you're a React developer or looking to learn to become a React developer, which I can only assume you are since you're watching this video, this is the best resource available to you on the internet, hands down. If you want to join, I highly recommend it. It's the first link in the description down below.
With that being said, my name has been Darius Cousin. This is Cousin Solutions. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao, ciao.